This time around, is there a silent voter in all of this, viewers? Once again, what I'm going to do is I'm cutting across to the in election intelligence uh, dashboard and we're going to take you through the second phase and what it looked like in 2017. There you have it, 51 uh, seats of the 93 were won by the Bharatiya Janata Party, uh, 39 were won by the Congress. So this is what it looks like in terms of the electoral map. Uh, and as it spread out, Rahul, what is interesting to note is exactly where the BJP consolidated central parts of uh, Gujarat and the northern areas are dyed in blue in 2017 which were consolidated by the Congress. But what would be interesting in all of this would be to see the swing seats um, in this area. Let's look at the swing seats this time around. Uh, well, this is the entire picture of Gujarat, but what's interesting is if we focus on the region which is going to vote right now, these were seats which uh, swung to the BJP. Uh, if you look at the central you know, uh, area of that Rahul, most of them were of the Congress and in 2017 the BJP won these seats. One of them is of course where Pankaj is standing, the seat of Godhra. Preeti, uh, the BJP has worked its, at its micromanagement, but it is a fact that if we are looking at the picture as far as the minority vote is concerned, uh, till, if, till a little while ago, there was a sense of worry in the Congress and even among uh, those who are watching, watching the elections there that is there going to be a split in the minority vote, Muslim vote. But what uh, it seems has happened is that some very senior leaders who had joined uh, the AIMIM uh, uh, left the party very unhappy. There is uh, Mr. Shamshad Pathan who was an emerging mm -hmm. leader of AIMIM. He, uh, after the Surat elections and later excise, he found, uh, went out of the overseas party claiming that it's working more as the BJP's B team. AAP was doing very well in the Muslim segments in, in Gujarat. But there is, I, uh, what I found, in the last two, three weeks, there have been questions asked over the AAP silence on the Bilkis Banu case. Mm -hmm that why is AAP maintaining that very stoic silence on this issue and that has not gone down very well with the minority voters and that is why what has happened that there is some kind of an unstated agreement now among minority voters that those who are best placed to defeat the BJP in a constituency they will go for that and that's what makes the chances for the Congress Stronger. much better because that means there could be I, less I agree with you, you know, Rahul, because as I was also traveling uh, through, uh, you know, some of these seats where there is a sizable minority population, at least in the last final leg of the campaign, you saw a basic consolidation by the minority vote. And it seems, at least on ground, to suggest to go the way of the Congress. And, uh, you know, they, earlier on there seemed to be, have been a split because the Aam Party was coming out stronger. But I, I you know, I feel that the AIMIM might not be able to, the 14 odd seats that they are fighting this election, might not be able to take away that much of uh, the uh, minority vote. No, it's seeming, it seems very difficult for True. Mr. Ovesi right now. But one element which uh, we were talking about, you saw uh, Pankaj trying to speak to the Congress yes. candidate. And there was a picture of Prime Minister in another window on our screen. Now, this is the stark difference between the political management of the parties in Gujarat and all over India today, I will say, barring an Arvind Kejriwal. You don't have local leaders, Preeti. The Congress, if it had a local chief ministerial candidate, he could have been here uh, talking to the media, creating those pixel moments, True. perhaps even if it earns them two more votes.